Hello and welcome to this Let's Play. My name is Maddis, and today we're going to be taking a look at Kirken, the second Gaelic faction, alongside Mead, the Irish faction. Kirken are, however, in Scotland. Kirken is a mixed match culture of Gaels, Picts, and Britons, forced here to escape the invaders. Being a Gaelic faction, Kirken have the same culture mechanics as Mead, legitimacy, which can strengthen or ruin your rule. We also have a bonus to loyalty for our nobles, and income from our churches. The Stone of Destiny is gone, and will be incredibly valuable to you if you can recover it. Kirken have two unique assets at their disposal, not found in any other faction. The Soul Terrain, which boosts food, replenishment, and grants immunity from snow attrition. We also have Crossbows, a very powerful missile unit available throughout the campaign. The rise of the McAlpins to Alba's throne was intended to herald a new era of prosperity. But the coming of the Vikings put pay to them. Their ravaging of our lands has left us divided. Now the throne is shared between Fortrio and the Western Isles claimed by the Vikings. The defeat of the sons of Ragnar to the south brings opportunity lands of Alba could be united. Take up this challenge, seize this opportunity, and show that one throne alone rules Scotland. We are reaching the early mid-game here, around 50 turns into the campaign. I've had to go to war to protect one of my allies against the Viking invaders, but we have since sought peace while also keeping the lands we have taken. We are still at war with Galgoidal, who have taken a key farming village from me and have rallied 14 units to their banner. I'm going to march north and drive them out with my far superior army, but they retreat just outside of my reach, so I'll have to deal with them in the coming months. In the meantime, let's take a look at some of the objectives that I have to complete. The first is to recover the Stone of Destiny, which is said to be the pillow which Jacob, the Patriarch, rested when he saw visions of angels. From then, it has travelled from Palestine to Egypt, Sicily, Spain, and eventually Ireland, who used it to crown their kings. But it has been lost. That was until an old man spoke to me, saying that it is time for the stone to be found, and whoever finds it will be blessed with great fortune. The learned men of my court have interviewed him and come up with a possible location, Stornoque. Getting the Stone of Destiny will grant me plus 5 supplies to all of my armies and 2,000 gold, which will help me build a strong kingdom. I just need to capture the settlement of Stonoque, an island on the Outer Hebrides, so I'll have to traverse the highlands of Scotland and sail through Viking-controlled seas. The town looks to have rebelled against its former owner and my former enemy, so taking it won't lead me into a war, but will give me a huge advantage by giving me a base of operations to attack from. So this will be my main objective. And after that one is done, I will finish off Orkney Arm. I have in this time sent a small force to march south and take any villages that they can, and then muster more men as and when they can. And we can also begin researching a new tech. As we can see, I've pushed quite hard into military and neglected to work on my economy, which is starting to hinder my progression. But I'm going to fulfill my plans and get to the next tier of units across the board. And so I'm going to start on the missile branch and unlock new bows and javelinmen. The Galgoidal army has set sail to more southern lands, which I cannot quickly defend. So I'm going to push ahead to Torfness and take it back. Now in doing this, I've acquired a new estate which has angered some of my nobles, who believe they should have one of their own. So I'm going to evenly give out some of the extra estates that I own, which will boost loyalty with all of my nobles. I have noticed that North Leod have been annihilated by North Umbra, so, I'm moving my army south to be closer to the border, and now I'm going to propose a peace treaty to end the war with Galgoidal, which they eventually accept. It 
could be worse. Now seems like a good time to take a look at Britannia as a whole. West CX have all but defeated East Engle and have become the Anglo-Saxons with Merce as their vassals. And the North is thick with Vikings, dividing lands between them. Dublin have land on both Ireland, Scotland and England and are quite the powerhouse. My vassal is at war with the Sea Vikings, but I can't get involved if I want to pass safely through the seas. So I've been travelling for a while to get here, and now we can take the village from sea. Oarsmen ready to row. To victory! My army greatly outnumbers theirs, but I'm going to land them in two different parts so I can outflank their army. The main bulk of my force is going to land and gather up with my general who has already landed as he's a cavalry unit. As soon as I move my men into position, I'm going to engage. I don't want a prolonged skirmish phase as they have javelin men and can be devastating to some of my units. The smaller portion of my army is going to sail along the coast and land behind the enemy. As soon as the melee is engaged, it's quick to see that the quality of my men is annihilating theirs. And with the stone in my possession, I can now go ahead and think about forming Alba. But first I need to rid myself of these northern raiders. Root and step. By sailing north and taking the village of Thursa, we have given ourselves a village to strike at the capital of Balscona next turn. There is an army to the south, but if I'm fast enough, they won't be able to get a village before I attack and take their final settlement. Again, we're going to be attacking from the sea, but this settlement has a very small beachhead for us to attack on. So landing my spearmen first to get the initial engagement and tie them down, and then bringing my more experienced troops and landing them next, giving me more power to break their line and finally bringing on my missile units to rain down hell from the beach. It is a long and brutal slog up the beach, but soon we break their line and the capital is ours. With the Sea Vikings in the north dealt with, I can once again feel safe with my northern border and look to the south to form the Kingdom of Alba. 